Hi-Fi has finally, and I mean finally, gotten the memo. Audio files one HDMI. With the presence of an AM-FM tuner, the 1000A is technically a stereo network receiver. It produces 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 120 watts into 6, though Yamaha does point out that the 1000 is stable down to 2 ohms, where it is capable of producing up to 290 watts, albeit in short bursts. Like Yamaha's S801 and the RN2000A, the 1000A it has a built-in DAC that uses an ES Saber chipset. It's not the same as what you're going to find in the costlier 2000A. 1000A, but it is a noticeable improvement over the S801. The 1000A gives you one coaxial input, two optical inputs, plus a USB input that supports DSD files. Also, like the 2000A, the 1000A's HDMI port with ARC allows you to connect to any modern smart TV with ARC eARC HDMI connectivity, making the Yamaha the perfect centerpiece in a stereo or 2.1 home theater. The presence of HDMI also means that you can control the Yamaha with your existing TV remote without any additional programming, so functions like power, volume, and in some cases even input selection can be tackled without needing to use a different remote, which is just super convenient. There are also several analog audio inputs, which include a built-in phono preamp for your turntable as well as a pair of preamp outputs and a separate subwoofer out. You can also access locally stored music files wirelessly or with an Ethernet connection. The 1000A, it has Bluetooth and AirPlay as well as support for Yamaha's MusicCast app, which has native support for popular music services like Spotify, Tidal, Kobuz, and more. Not to mention, this also opens the Yamaha up to the possibility of wireless whole home audio when used with other compatible products. In other words, this ain't your grandfather's Yamaha. Now, whenever you're evaluating an amplifier, you really want to limit your variables. So when I realized the 1000A was more than capable of driving the 4-ohm load of the R11 Meta Tower speakers, I stuck with the KEFs over other speakers, like, say, the BMW 606 S3 bookshelves, Sonus Faber Lumina 2s, and even Yamaha's own towers. The KEFs are pretty neutral speakers, so any change to their overall tonality becomes really easy to discern. I connected the 1000A to our Sony X95L using a high-speed HDMI cable where I could access all of our favorite audio and video apps on our Apple TV 4K. To test the Yamaha's DAC, I relied on the Cambridge Audio AXN10 streamer, and the Alva TT V2 turntable and my iPhone allowed me to test the Yamaha's phono preamp as well as its Bluetooth capabilities. Another nice thing about Yamaha's latest crop of HDMI-equipped products is the added presence of Yamaha's Auto Room Correction Procedure, or Wipeout. Now, Wipeout, it, it's been with Yamaha AV receivers for decades, so its implementation here feels very familiar. With no real on-screen display, Wipeout here is pretty much plug-and-play, and given that every room and speaker combination is going to produce different results, I will be describing the sound of the 1000A without Wipeout engaged. Regardless, though, Wipeout does work, and it can help to address common room issues. Despite having similar specs, the 1000A does not sound identical to the more expensive 2000A. The 1000 has a more lively sound. I wouldn't call it bright, but it definitely feels more agile, which makes every aspect of your music and even movies take about a step forward toward the speaker's front baffles, though it never really extends beyond that. The bass from our R11 Metas wasn't as deep or as well dampened through the 1000A, but I'll be damned if it didn't sound quicker with greater attack and faster decay. Choosing between the 2000 and the 1000's different presentations is a toss-up. On the one hand, the kick drums on Enter Sandman had more subwoofer-like grunt through the 2000A, which I, I loved, but switching gears to the more dance-oriented track, Body Shop, the faster pace of the 1000A proved to be just the ticket. Now, you can always add a sub to the 1000A for a greater sensation of weight. Just know that the more affordable 1000A doesn't quite have the bass prowess as the costlier 2000. A mild leanness is also observable in the mid-range. Both Yamaha amps are what I would classify as neutral, though when directly compared, the 1000A has a cooler tone. Vocals and mid-range leaning instruments all have terrific detail and inflection, but lack just a hint of body, keeping them from being truly three-dimensional, something the 2000A absolutely excels at. Still, at this price point, the 1000A's mid-range clarity and focus is beyond reproach. It stands out in stark contrast to the Audiolab 7000A's mid-range, which is warmer and softer. The 1000A's mid-range, more specifically its vocal rendering, has more in common with, say, Technics than it does Audiolab and even the costlier 2000A. 
Moving up to the treble, the 1000A's high frequency rendering is sharper compared to the smoother and more organic and nuanced 2000A. There is a greater sense of weight, space, and air surrounding piano trills with the 2000A, whereas the 1000A, it hits heavier at the point of impact of the note itself. It's not a bright or fatiguing sound, but like the rest of the amp, it comes off as just, just a little bit leaner when compared to the costlier competition, including Yamaha's own products. If you're a detail hawk, I think you're really going to appreciate the 1000A's sensation of treble emphasis and the greater level of intelligibility and just sonic contrast it brings to your favorite music. Which leaves soundstage and dynamics. The 1000A soundstage is shockingly large and has terrific scale in both width and depth. Focus and separation between the speakers is strong, but the 2000A has better DAX and its greater control just results in notable gains in instrument separation and clarity. The 2000A pulls the music apart and allows you to experience the physical space of a performance itself. In contrast, the 1000A doesn't quite manage to put every instrument or note under a microscope. Dynamically, however, I would not be surprised if listeners walked away from the 1000A and felt it was better or more dynamic than the 2000A. It definitely feels faster on the attack and just more explosive, but some of the crescendos and explosions, they, they skip a step or two in their ramp up. Still, for a sub $2,000 do-it-all integrated, the 1000A is pretty damn good. 1000A's built-in phono preamp is good, but against others, it lacks the clarity I know the Alva TT turntable is capable of. It's actually one of the warmer or richer aspects of the 1000A's performance, which may be a good thing for some of you. If you're rocking, say, a turntable with an Ortofon Red or even the Blue, I think you're going to be happy with the 1000A's built-in capability. But for cartridges beyond that, you may end up shopping for a better phono preamp. I know, I, I know, streamers are a really hot topic right now. You probably even have one or 12 sitting in a shopping cart somewhere. The 1000A's MusicCast app negates the need for a separate streamer. <laughs> MusicCast works, it works really well, and it, it already gives you access to popular streaming services natively, so you can save a bit of money in the process. When it comes to comparisons, I I think I've adequately covered how the 1000A compares to its siblings, the 2000A and S801. But for all of the specifics, you gotta be kind and rewind, brother. For those who want a quick recap, the 1000A, it's very good. It is a noticeable upgrade over the S801, but the 2000A is the better overall Yamaha product. The Audio Lab 7000A, it's already been mentioned a few times in this review, but to kind of give you the bird's eye view. While the 7000A retails for about the same as the 1000 and even has similar features, you do get more for your investment with the Yamaha. I'm talking more power, more options like music streaming, which Audio Lab sells separately through their 7000N, not to mention the 1000A has room correction. I still love the 7000A. It's warmer and fuller sound is phenomenal, but there's just no denying the 1000A's insane value in comparison. If I was at the register, the Yamaha would get my money. As for the more expensive Technics GX70, that review is still ongoing. Despite having fewer watts per channel, the GX70 has no issues driving our R11 metas, which is shocking. That's all I'm going to share with you at the moment, so you're going to have to keep watching for more on this matchup because it's really shaping up to be a good one. I've been very pleased with what Yamaha has been doing as of late. I, I don't believe they've been doing anything radically different with, say, their house sound. Still, they, they have definitely stepped things up when it comes to giving customers features that they want and need, making high-quality music and movie playback just more obtainable and easier to access. And I love that. Yamaha's new lineup of HDMI and streaming equipped integrated amplifiers, sorry, stereo receivers, are fantastic and the RN1000A, I'm sure, is going to satisfy many listeners for years to come. So that's what I think of Yamaha's new 1000A, but before we get out of here, gotta know, where are you at? I love this amp. Really? Yes, I know. I'm shocked too. Oh! I actually like it more than the Audio Lab. Oh! <gasps> What? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I nobody's as, as surprised as I am. Yeah. Especially because I thought that the 2000A Audio Lab 9000A were so very close for me. Yeah. Um so yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned in your review that mm. you felt that some people would probably prefer the less expensive Yamaha. And I am that person. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Easy. Really? Easy. Dynamically, okay. like yeah. you were, you mentioned, the 1000 
completely won me over. Mm -hmm. The Kefs sounded so good yeah. on this amp. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great matchup mm -hmm. for a speaker that's you know, up above the $5,000 price point. I think it can hang. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. So, it was really good. I thought there was um, that treble emphasis yep. that led to a little bit of a better intelligibility mm -hmm. um, with this particular amp was definitely noticeable by me. Yeah. So I really like it. I do. <laughs> I'm... I may reach out to Yamaha and see if they might let it hang out a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I, cause I really think it's good and yeah. it w clearly can handle slightly more difficult to, to power speakers. Yeah. And which when we're taught when as a review channel, that's really helpful, helpful for us. Mm -hmm. I know we probably have a hundred comments already <laughs> like two seconds in yeah, to yeah. your intro. Mm -hmm. They they started typing because they just can't help themselves. Yeah. And, you know, there are going to be a lot of people that disagree mm -hmm. that say, you know, we don't need uh, um, HDMI. I mean, look, at this point, those same people probably said 10, 15 years ago, I don't need optical or I don't need a DAC inside my integrated. You need to stop looking at HDMI as being different than any integrated amp or preamp offering you USB multiple USBs, optical or coaxial. It's just another digital input. And it's a digital input that's now ubiquitous with our everyday lives. And so it, it needs to stop being looked at as its own thing. Like it's like, oh, you know, HDMI is somehow worse or something than just offering you optical or whatnot. Um, and the whole notion of like, I, I don't want to connect it to a TV. Why not? Why not? Like you've spent all this money on an integrated and stereo and a turntable and all of this. Why not also enjoy the occasional show or sports broadcast with better sound? You know, why not? Um, and the other thing, and I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but if you have a TV and you have an amp like this, which also has music cast app capability and whatnot, you have two streamers connected to it. So we can knock it off with the streamer on streamer on streamer talk. Um, it's not necessary. It really isn't necessary. And the fact that you get all of this functionality at the exact same price as say a 7,000A from Audio Lab or just a lot of other products. I don't, I'm not, I, I don't want to sound like I'm picking on Audio Lab because it's still a great product. And if you bought one, don't worry about it. You're, you're fine. Um, but it is just, it's so refreshing, especially coming off of a few weeks ago, you know, where we were talking about Macintosh and how they literally stripped everything out of the product, you know, literally everything, knowing full well they could have included it. So I applaud Yamaha. I do. I applaud Yamaha. I applaud anyone that makes a product in 2023 going into 2024 that just says, you know what people want? They don't want excuses. That's what they really that's what, that's what really customers don't want are excuses. And the Yamaha is an honest product at seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 roughly. I, I might be something. Um, it delivers honest performance. It delivers honest power. It delivers honest features. And they all work. Well, speaking of its features, mm -hmm. I know that for the review, you, your, when you describe the sound, mm -hmm. You d you you preface that this is without YPOW correct engaged correct and I know there will be people there will be people that want to know more about your thoughts on how how did YPOW in your opinion change the sound well one thing to get right about room correction is room correction corrects your speakers interaction with your room it doesn't correct bad speaker design now admittedly the Kef R11s in our room are almost perfect in terms of there's not really anything that I need to address tune, uh, you know, when it comes to their interaction with the room, they fit this room like a glove. So why with those speakers did not have that big of an effect, if any, to be perfectly honest, it really didn't. Um, so that's what I mean with everyone's kind of mileage is going to vary. Um, and even when I ran YPOW on Yamaha's own towers, it might have tightened them up a little bit, might have tightened them up a little bit, but nothing too, like, ooh, night and day different. Again, because that speaker is just really, really, really well constructed. Um, so I just, I want to kind of, 
uh, what's the word, uh, manage expectations. Um, if you run something like YPOW or Direct or Odyssey and it just sounds like you've got a different speaker all of a sudden, um, one of two things are probably happening. You probably have massive bass peaks and nulls, in which case, yes, it is going to sound like you bought a whole new speaker if suddenly the bass feels more controlled. Because if the bass is controlled, your mid-range is going to sound clearer. And that might mean that the mid-range sounds more present, which makes the tweeter less hot or noticeable. So these are all good things. But if you're like, holy crap, like it made the speaker so much more brighter, you might want to run it again. You might want to run it again because most room correction is really trying to tame and control bass as best it can. Um, a lot of them don't even really address treble. But yeah, I mean, it's in our room. Did YPOW have an effect? Sure. Is it something that I, I needed or relied on? No. But the good news is, is I don't believe that it ever led me wrong and it never, it never took anything away from the speaker. So that's good. And it didn't like alter the experience. So a Kef is still going to be a Kef. Yamaha is still going to be Yamaha. Bowers and Wilkins still going to be Bowers and Wilkins. Okay. I mean, the only other thing that I, th I could see potentially people asking for would be a comparison with the NAD. Um, mm, which one? The C seven hundred. Oh, that gosh. is yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's the last time I looked. It was around sixteen hundred dollars, mm -hmm. eighty watts. Okay. Um, by two into eight or four ohms. It has mm -hmm. HDMI, a powered sub out, mm -hmm. separate amp out. So I just yeah, I wanted mean, to know your, if you if you just give a quick a quick uh, elevator pitch on the differences. I mean, if you're tight on space. If you're tight on space and you want something that's a little bit more compact, a little bit more discreet, um, and you don't mind the hybrid sound, the super, super neutral, characterless, colorless sound of NAD, the C700 is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a power node with a really nice, pretty screen on it. I personally would take the Yamaha. The one thing I really do like about Yamaha, and this may be unique to me because we're a review channel, but I do love the A and B speaker outputs. It makes doing A-B comparisons with speakers just the push of a button without any special additional boxes that introduce potential variables. Um, and they still are really strong into that. I also love that, you know, Yamaha is still really strong with like loudness controls and the fact that the 1000A and the 2000A have variable loudness, which can help with low level listening you know, and, and bring back some of that bass presence if you need it at lower volumes. Um, that's, that's really cool. And that's something that a lot of companies have gotten away from, or they just give you on and off, whereas maybe on's too much. You know, I do like that. I would, I would get the Yamaha. That's just me. The, the C700 is, is great. NAD products are just great. It, it, they, they do, they work. They're kind of like, you know, just a, it's a reliable car. You know, it's going to get you from point A to point B and it's going to have all the features you need. It's just not going to be very flashy. Um, and that's fine. And that's fine. I, I, I have nothing against that. I just happen to gravitate a little bit more towards Yamaha. All right, guys, that is now our review of Yamaha's new 1000A stereo network receiver. It's an integrated amp. Come on. Uh, <laughs> what did you guys think? If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead, ring that bell so you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that we've left you or Christie's left you, uh, I have nothing to do with it, um, that Christie's left you, know that that's a great way that uh, you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we both do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram, Recovering Audio File, yada, yada, yada. Uh, just remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.